Uh, thank you very much for that nice introduction and a uh, very warm welcome here to Aachen. We invested in our best weather and, uh, well, I just came back uh, yesterday morning from Boston from a uh, yearly annual show of a leading software, American software company. And uh, you believe it or not, it happened on a stage that was the original latest stage of Lady Gaga. And, um, well, I was feeling a bit uncomfortable, and I said to all these, because I was very impressed, this is pure American, we couldn't do that in Germany. But if I look here, I think it's coming close to that. So, <laughs> warm welcome. And um, my topic is uh, new paradigms of product development on the example of uh, electrical vehicles that we are trying to yeah, push a bit forward uh, push a bit forward, push a bit forward. <laughs> ah, push a bit forward. And, um, well, it is very interesting how innovation process can or could or will happen in the future. The only thing we as German traditional engineers know already is um, it will be different. And um, because it is difficult to do market surveys to understand what customers really want. We have a lot of volatility. It is, well, the opposite of plannable is, is, is uncertainty. Very difficult to build up plans on the, on the circumstances of uncertainty. It is all so much interdependent that it's complex, over complex, we even say in German. And ambiguity is, uh, well, it is hard, hard to tell, and for engineers, that's perhaps the worst. And um, I would start with, with one important part, and electrical vehicles are a good example. I mean, we see lots of um, movement, a lot of international or, well, worldwide interest on that for very uh, easy to understand reasons. In Germany, for instance, I think uh, we have right now about 30 electrical cars, pure electrical cars that you can buy. But if we put that roughly in comparison to what number of cars are sold, nobody buys it. So the question is, actually, in one of my last lectures in that semester, somebody of the students said to me, I know now why. These car guys, especially in Germany, they love so much the combustion engine, they just had to develop these cars, but they don't want to sell them. So um, perhaps, um, well, I doubt that. Um, but the question is how to figure out what customers really want. So what's at the other side of that um, bridge? And if so, and I believe we could do better in recognizing what customer needs with facts, with big data, with a lot of new approaches. However, this wouldn't push the fork completely away on that bridge. So even if we would do better in the beginning with the orientation where to, where to shoot with our ideas, uh, what, what markets we'd, we'd like to address, there will be a big remaining part of not being secure. And that needs agility. Agility in product development in terms of, well, we have to start. I think a big, big issue is in all the good ideas. If you have a good basic idea, get started. And don't waste too much time in too much of inquiries and surveys and so, so forth. But if you do so, you have to be capable to adjust. And that is very difficult with our traditional, very domain and department and silo-oriented uh, organizations in companies. And, and we try to figure out why how we as, as human beings in our social groups in companies uh, so hesitating. And uh, we found out five characteristics in our natural behavior, what we normally do. And one is we associate progress with tiny, tiny step-by-step -step advancement on what we know, on existing concepts. And that leads automatically to incremental innovations. 
and especially German engineers, are very proud to work so solidly in, in being secure in deep dives, in, in deep um, surveys to improve something, at least in a tiny step, but in a known environment, in a known concept environment, and so forth. First problem. Second, we have something like a completeness paranoia. I know that in the US, especially Germans, are blamed to have that paranoia because we came over some 25 years with SAP. And SAP was one of the, the leading um, uh, business software uh, vendors uh, in the world, and especially in America, a lot of people said, it is so annoying to get all data structured and complete because before you can start that, that software, that's German completeness paranoia. You don't need it, but they want it. So um, I think something is true on that, to be honest. Um, sometimes it's helped, it helps, but nowadays it hinders also. Third, we have um, that behavior without thinking, it's, it's just more a habit that we think in known patterns, very normal, very human, so to say. So that means I stick to my discipline. Uh, for, for instance, as a mechanical engineer, I typically have some doubts to really step into electrical engineering or one step further or in, 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 in um, uh, data science, data analytics in sophisticated um, 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 math, for instance. And so that means it is very difficult to, to think over the counter if myself, if I, I have doubts, if I hesitate to, to really allow myself to think in the neighbor departments or domains. The, the fourth thing is the capability just to think in short-term adoptions. We, we, if, we, if, if we have a great idea, and there are lots of great ideas around, not only with young people, not only with startups, there are great ideas around in all these companies, but they, they very soon, very early, people stop thinking that way if these ideas would lead them beyond that what the, the social system in which they are working would not be used to do that. And so um, all that divided uh, responsibilities, this decentralized system brings just short-term little incremental, the above point, um, as, as, as the potential step or step length in innovation we normally achieve. Yeah, and, and the last is we find beautiful, we like those things we are knowing the best. So standards are very important for us, especially in Germany we like technical standards. We, when we start to invent something, we first look in a standard book or we know these standards. So there is a, 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 a resistance to step out of that frame that is already given in standards. Look on uh, autonomous driving. We are very much hesitating to at least design rules above the level three assistant, highly assisted uh, driving. And, and really automatic driving starts on level four um, and especially on level five when no uh, safety driver uh, is involved anymore. So I would like to step in a few of these items and how we tried in our little Aachen Valley <laughs> to, um, well, step out of these borders. And one was to overcome that incremental innovation thing. And, you know, if you talk now about the new mobility, of course, a lot of people say, of course, that is purely electrical. And it has to, well, really replace the known car with the, the combustion car with all its features that, that combustion cars normally have. Well, we had that situation before, you remember? Henry Ford, those days, he claimed that he has, he has said in, in, in 1908, he said, um, 
if I would have asked the market, he would have, uh, the market would have answered faster horses. You know, we are about to do the same. The whole auto industry, well, at least in Europe, missed the first shot of starting into real EVs. Then they realized the second one, that was a Tesla approach, and they were surprised. It took quite some years, and then they invented first departments, Tesla fighting departments in more or less all of these OEM companies. That's probably not the worst idea, but a late idea. It, the name even tells you that it's a late idea. And now they're in the third wave, and they think they understood what you, what we really want. And uh, they ask us, and we said, uh, faster horses. Oh no, more range. I, I think it's the same. Um, so we invest now in big batteries and charging stations everywhere and, and uh, um, high-speed high charging and so forth. If you're on that bridge looking in that fog, there are other ways to find out. For instance, if you realize what you really, really can achieve with, with electrical powertrains, that, of course, is emission-free at the place where it's used, not where the energy is, is gained or transformed, and so, why don't you just stand with several people counting downtown cities where this emission is quite high, like in Aachen. We are one of the 22 cities in, in Germany that are blamed from the EU, EU Commission that they um, are above the levels of emissions, so we will get some, some whatever um, measures to take against that, and the best, the only measure I, I, I can imagine of is stopping some of the traffic in the cities. So that's perhaps not the nicest idea, because people even want to live more in cities than less. So what we did, we just stood in, in the city, in the city of Aachen, and looked in the faces as good as we, as, as we uh, could of those people driving in the city. And it came out that there are some 15 customer types, and then we sat on that customer idea, did a customer journey, and looked what these customers, potential customers, do uh, on a normal day. And that is the, well, in Germany we call it Mama Taxi, or Family Taxi. This is, you know, getting up, bringing kids to school, arriving at school, go going in an office, in this case a part-time job of, of the, uh, the, the mother, arriving in a uh, meeting, going in a grocery store, waiting at school to pick the uh, kids up, and having further transfer kids to sport, and so forth, and so forth. No rental car, no car sharing can solve that. Um, you don't need a normal car with normal range, because it is, in, in average, we counted seven to eight drives per day. In total, 65. Um, um, uh, kilometers, um, or in this day, uh, even less, 35, so six launches, 35 kilometers per day, uh, waiting time, 430 minutes, so um, charging possibility either at home or at the working place where you are. And then we did the same with all the other user descriptions, and we found out it is important for drivers, even those who are not interested in cars, how the car look like. It's like, like you're dressed, you, you care how you look. And if you're sitting in a car, your dress is the car. So most people are interested, even those who are, have no idea about, or, or no, no passion with cars. And, um, and a lot of people don't want to change cars, because how to use them. I just talked to somebody who drove first time a rental Mercedes, and he saw, what big block is that beside the steering wheel? Ooh. And then he tried to use the blinker, you know, with the tempomat. And, um, well, uh, so user habits are very important, privacy is important, availability is important, and that gives a complete new story to a car. And so we said, a small car, but it must be capable to carry stuff, it must be a four-seater, it could be small, and it, it, it would be affordable, so anybody could afford that, if we do that completely different than an existing car. So not 
and too early assumption to take just the same things like anybody takes. And the first idea was, is it possible to make such a small car with a non-carrying exterior, that's just plastic, therm thermoform uh, plastic, is it possible to make that safe? And so we build it with a specs list of 20% of the whole car only, we build it these rolling chassis and, and assumed what is the safety, what is the crash safety, what is the driving behavior, next single test, next crumb loop, next iterative loop was um, to figure out whether it is possible to, to have a nice driving feeling, a speedy feeling, good acceleration with a very small electrical car, using again some technology benefit of electrical engines. That's the boost function. And since we uh, got, got an arrangement with Bosch and got starter engines from big cars, two of them as our, our powertrain, and that, uh, you know, my, my specs, my most important specs um, that I gave was if it starts at the traffic light, you know, that's very important. It has to make black lines, you know. So you have to push the boost function. And so this car is faster in acceleration at the traffic light than my Porsche. I see you don't believe that. Well, we actually, it, um, well, the next traffic light should be close. And now, and now we figured out how, how, how close. It's three meters. So, how, however, it's really fun to start with that. And so we had, in, in total, we developed that car from that first idea five times. Five times a different car. We knew that we have iterations, so we were not pushed. We really wanted to learn with each uh, iteration. And so a couple of weeks ago, we introduced that car, that's now the final car. We do, did this like the other car makers as well. We did the biggest possible ties on, but you can order it with smaller ties if you wish. I wouldn't recommend because of that black lines, you know. Um, so um, that is the complete difference of starting with the full specs list for a car. We started with 20% or so. We had a Waterloo in the middle of that development. We wanted to develop that as a very small car in a different category than normal cars. That was a micro car category that we category that was just a bit altered in its in its rules in, in Europe. Uh, it was it is called L seven E category and the normal cars are, are M1 category. And we this category is is less stressy with homologation with all the um, the, the rules you have to obey. So we wanted to be, build that car in that ca category. However, even with less safety requirements, we wanted to make it as safety as possible. But then all of a sudden, two movies in YouTube uh, appeared showing two cars in that category in a crash test. And that was such a horrible movie um, that we said that but we, we are in that category, but we are safe. That story will nobody believe. So we changed in early of December last year a completely ready designed car and decided to, all, to change the category. And that meant we made the car 20 centimeters wider. So anybody of you had ever to do with the auto industry and you tell them that you approximately six weeks before you want to go into homologation, you um, make the car 20 centimeters wider. You can imagine it's not just putting some metal of 20 centimeters in the middle of the car. It is a bit more engineering in that, and it involves all of those. Unfortunately, even our previous design was not possible. It, it was awfully looking in that wider size of car, of course, a lot of mechanics had to, had to be changed, even some electrics and electronics, and some of the software had to be changed. So if we would have worked in the traditional disciplines, that change request, that's the biggest challenge in industry right now, uh, being capable to, to really have a mature change requested, even partly automated change requested. That's, that's normally would last in auto industry, let's say, almost a year. And we did it in nine weeks. So, of course, we are a small company. 
nice, nice startup mentality that makes a lot of things easier. However, that was an in, in, incomparable speed just because we, we stepped out of that functional department thinking and we worked with a common set of data, which we call smart data level, where we put aggregated condensed data of each domains in a, an, an accessible uh, data level that we can um, uh, address with, with, with um, 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 touch tools with, with some um, 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 easy to use um, uh, tools to really have collaboration easy. So if the software guy wants to alter his stuff, he sees already all the, for him, relevant data from the neighbor department. Yeah, that is finally that story. We wanted to build a car that would have been a bit more nicer designed, but approximately like this. And then we, we decided on the 13th of December to make that car wider, to integrate side airbags, to change the complete design, to implement that in our prototype assembly. And we made a market presentation on the CBIT in Hannover on the 20th of March. And um, well, I would say without that smart data level, without that horizontal integration above domains and with a lot of partners on a PLM base with the idea all relevant data are in the single source of truth um, manner stored that you have the precise um, um, access to the very actual data in each of these uh, domains and um, disciplines. And finally, we just look into the, um, yeah, normally working with standards. And to overcome that and to work in, in other settings, it needs, yeah, some valley. I think that's one part of Silicon Valley that makes it so strong, that there are so much good relationships beyond domains and beyond even branches that they are so much easier um, in, in the way to, to conduct new business models. That's very necessary because that helps any single expert to step into, let's say, a neighbor domain and, and uh, start to, to um, um, contribute to an unusual setting. We all, in, in, in Germany, we, we call, <laughs> call that Industry 4.0. User stories will be written differ differently and they can be the basis of a new requirement understanding in markets. And I think one important part is as early as possible get started. Get started and try to objectively, as objective as possible, to learn from that. Second, the the, the number of requirements has to be much more structured and there should be uh, uh, priorities on the real things that you want to make differently. We wanted to make an affordable car. So we d didn't want to accept any significant capex so that car should be affordable even if you just produce 10,000 cars in a year, which is a little number in the auto industry. And so, prioritization instead of completeness or completeness um, paranoia. Third, the, re the semantic um, um, conflicts between domains have to be solved through our behavior, but now in the internet age, it can be helped very much because we have access to all these domains via internet if we prepare the raw data from all these priority. We have that access. And, and prepare that level of data, what we would call the smart data level, and that would help very much to um, resolve these domain limits in, in, in uh, semantic-based um, uh, collaboration. And the fourth thing is to really concentrate on the capability of an organization of change requests. That begins in the very early stage of a development process, and that, uh, that should be continuous the, the whole life of the, of, um, of the product. Our car will be a product that you can buy, but even better is if you subscribe it. Because we will offer you, you have learned that from Tesla, but we will not only or basically offer 
software updates, we will offer you hard and software combined, combined uh, updates. And that's possible because the frame of the car lasts 100 years. That will, won't get weak like self-carrying cars. All the cabling, all the engines, there's nobody in the world uh, producing nice electrical engines that last less than 100 years. So why don't we keep that? And the rest of the car can be refurbished, disassembled and assembled again. So starting to step in real digital products in any domain, also in a very traditional domain of cars. And we need learning organizations, <laughs> like what you, you are doing here. So it was a great honor for me to be a small part of that event. Thank you very much.